Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones and we are here at Maidenpool because of course we want to do a caravan escort mission. This is obviously going to be one of the greatest ways for us to make some cash, get some experience, get some loot and maybe even be able to do a manual laborer quest on top of that. Now I'm very much hoping that what they're going to do, which is... Mm, I'm going to say it right now, it's a bit unlikely that they're going to head over to salt pans. I can only hope that they're going to do this, but if they don't go over to salt pans, then we're just going to have to... Yeah, okay, they're not. But maybe there's going to be a tournament going on where we're heading. That's literally the only thing I can kind of hope for right now, because if there is, then we're going to have a wonderful time. Because we can basically double up on the amount of renown that we're making... We're going to double up on the amount of, well, pretty much anything else that we're making. And it's just going to be a wonderful time had by all. Ooh, this is a manual labor quest right here at this village. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. All right, let's head on in and see what we can do here. Now, this is obviously going to be great opportunities for, well, apart from the fact that, you know, all the stuff that I've already mentioned, but generally going to be great for me to try and earn some archery skill as well but of course you know these guys <laughs> they're, they're yeah i'm not very good let's just say that i'm not very good at hitting them on horseback um i'm i'm all right but i'm not amazing and so i'm gonna be um not really doing too well there but anyway let's just tell our cavalry and infantry to charge in here we kind of need to do that and uh, i'm gonna actually get out my pole arm here maybe i can Maybe just do a little bit more damage with it. As you can see, a lot of people actually getting murdered right now, which is not exactly great. Kind of want to try to avoid that as best we can because this is going to be, well, potentially quite a long mission. And we don't really want to get out of strength, do we? Because I'm actually dwindling in terms of combat strength anyway because uh, I have a massive amount of capacity now and I've just lost a lot of people in the last couple of fights. And, uh, yeah, I kind of needed to go back to Targaryen territory to try and recruit some more people. But, unfortunately, it is a very large map. Uh, both, it's, it's both a boon and a curse, to be honest, because on the one hand, you know, obviously it makes it very immersive and atmospheric and so on and so forth. And very, very cool to, you know, expand your territory and your influence and so on and so forth to the, you know, reaches of the greater world and so on you know that's all wonderful and great but the unfortunate thing is the travel time yeah the travel time is obviously going to be a pretty big issue and that's also partially the reason why it's a good idea to try and get as much of the movement speed um, skill that you need for example let's say that you're an infantry based character you want to get as much athletics as possible if you're a riding skill character or a mounted character then you probably want to try and get as much riding as possible because that is indeed going to help you to move faster on the world map as well. Anyway, let's just level these guys up. Yeah, I've actually found as well, uh, I do agree with you, there seems to be quite a big disparity from the, uh, the infantry for the Valerians. They do not seem to be that good. Uh, I think the, uh, the cavalry is probably going to be better there, but obviously if you, if you think about how... Uh, shall we say, um, how many requirements there are to actually be leveling those those cavalry, it might be a bit too difficult for us to make that work on a regular basis. Ooh, art of the trade. Okay, unlucky, unlucky. It's kind of hoping that it was going to be, um, you know, manual laborers, but of course, even if it was, they'd probably require, I don't know, 15, 16 prisoners, and we only have nine at the moment, so I'd need to head onward anyway, so it's not, not really that useful, but Here's the thing. Someone actually told me that there's an extremely cool ability here. Mm -hmm. Yes, duelist. Mm. This is actually going to be extremely important for us to get, in my opinion. But the problem with this is that I need to spec more info. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? Let's try it out. I'm going to try to get to 100 in one-handed. So that means I need to get a one-handed and I'm going to need to find something that's relatively long reach. So I'm thinking something that's around 105 length is probably going to be pretty good. And I'm not going to spec any of my attribute points into vigor, control, or endurance. I'm actually going to be going for social here because I want to get more charm skill because in the end, and uh, quite a few people have asked me this, and I'm just going to answer you now, I'm 
hoping that we will be able to join Daenerys's faction because apparently I have not joined hers and I've actually joined Aegon's and I was uh, unaware of that at the time but anyway um, that notwithstanding I would like to also have our character marry Daenerys if we can actually have that happen because I'm, I'm thinking that would be pretty cool and uh, it would kind of maybe help us to have some charm skill in that in that aspect you know because otherwise if we don't have any charm skill it's going to be a little bit difficult to make that work she's not going to be uh, you know persuaded that easily i assume anyway we're just going to wait here for a little bit of time and oh that was quick okay i thought that, i thought they were going to take a lot longer than that that's for sure anyway we're going to go on to river run these guys literally only have three troops remaining okay that's not looking particularly good as you can see they're actually getting attacked by random stuff now okay that's not good either we're just going to auto resolve that these guys are literally so incredibly low level that it's not really doing much oh now these guys mean a whole different kind of business these guys are forest no they're not forest bandits they're just part of the forest bandit faction but they are actually the same things that we were dealing with beforehand you know just the mounted pillagers and ransackers and so on and these guys are obviously fantastic for us okay so what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit more defensively this time so i'm just going to place my archers round about here in the tree line and oh, i really wish you know that's one of the things i really wish these caravan units that we're trying to help they just stand out there they just stand out there randomly they don't actually play with us they don't actually allow me to order them around at all they pretty much just do whatever they want and that has a profound effect on how many casualties they actually take in any battle at all and it makes it very difficult for us to protect them because otherwise we're going to have to forego any strategy whatsoever and then it's going to basically be like oh okay they've just lost a bunch of, of, of people a bunch of troops for nothing basically and it's the same thing you know you, you might expect otherwise because this is this is the funny thing about that if they would actually listen to me i could probably save i don't know 70 percent, maybe 80 percent of them because i would basically just place their units at the back of the battlefield or relatively you know far away from the battlefield or just amongst our own units but they don't actually listen at all they just do their own thing and uh well that's not particularly good for my own troops well-being either so it's kind of like okay they're just gonna run in there randomly that's not gonna be particularly useful is it anyway we're just gonna tell our archers to charge in here hopefully we're gonna be okay to get them into effective range there's only a handful of enemies remaining only two more remaining as you can see this guy's just lost his mount and there we have it a wonderful victory for us and we did actually gain another seven wounded prisoners so i should be able to capture them in just a second just going to auto resolve that get these guys here and i'm very much hoping that the caravan mission yeah that's kind of what i was uh hoping to avoid actually they literally just lost all of their troops yeah they literally just lost all of their troops because as i said they were just charging their guys in without any i mean i don't even know without any uh any sense whatsoever any strategic impact at all in this case they were literally just thinking to themselves okay we're just gonna go you know f1 f3 you know that's the classic meme isn't it you know f1 f3 you know back in warband and i think in in battle lord as well i think it's the same where it's just literally target all and boom send everyone in with a charge and uh you know i i'm a culprit of that don't get me wrong i am indeed a culprit of that but you got to think about the fact that the ai is trying to survive right it's trying to survive so it's kind of weird that they would just tell them tell their forces just to charge in you know it seems super super weird but yeah that's exactly what happened so that's really unfortunate however however we are gaining some pretty decent gains from the mercenary wages which is obviously one of the main reasons why i wanted to do a caravan mission it would have been very nice if we could have succeeded because succeeding in these things is obviously much better than not we're going to gain a pretty significant benefit from just generally doing it but yeah it's uh it's kind of sad that that actually you know determines how effective the uh the success rate of the actual task is because obviously if you think about how 
you know, if they would actually just play a little bit more reserved, you know, don't just charge straight on in randomly and force me to charge in as well with them because I, I have a primarily archer based force right now and I don't really want to be charging them in because that's, that's fundamentally, you know, opposite to what I should be doing with archers, you know, with my archers, I should literally be holding position like I did and just trying to do as much damage as possible from range. But my forces, my uh, my caravan, you know, my, my allies forces, they basically just go like, yeah, just going to charge straight on in. And that is not a good look. That is not a good look at all. It actually makes things so much more difficult. And indeed, it failed the quest for me. I mean, what am I expected to do? I guess I'm expected to charge in. That's probably the only thing that I could do in that situation, which is, again, uh, kind of kind of uncomfortable it's not something that you would want to do blue team can you actually help me there we go okay finally great okay well obviously we do have the ability to do the tournament here which i suppose is pretty decent and if i do get the uh maybe maybe the chance to use a one-handed i might be able to level it up a little bit more because obviously the one-handed skill that we've so far gained has literally just been from tournaments because i don't think i've actually used a one-handed uh that much if at all in regular combat so there is that to consider and it means that uh, tournament going is not uh, not especially bad but i am just now getting pole arms shoved in my hands all the time and i'm thinking to myself okay well could you give me a one-handed you know just give me a one-handed and then i'll be pretty happy okay they did actually give me a one-handed gonna try and make good use of it don't i don't get shot don't get shot okay let's just try and murder this guy oh there we go that was easy Okay, don't get shot, don't get shot. Let me just try and strafe a little bit. There we go. And now we can just do some damage there. There we are. That was easy enough, wasn't it? All right, well, now we've got a one-on-one. -on -one, and they've given me a two-handed. Oh, no. They should have just given me a one-handed. That would have been fantastic. Okay, I'm going to go for a thrust here. Nice. Overhead, overhead, and he's dead. Okay, fantastic. That was perfect. All right, so, yeah. Uh, obviously, this is the main deal here. If I can get my one-handed weapon proficiency over to 100 skill, over to 100, then I'll be able to take that wonderful, wonderful perk, which someone actually recommended as well, by the way. And thank you very much for letting me know about that, because I have used that perk in the past, most specifically in the Duelist series. And if you want to see a really, really fun series that focuses on one-handed without a shield on foot you want to check that series out because I'm literally having to deal with archers without a shield in sieges and so on and so forth. And it is absolutely amazing how fast you can actually get your character to run. Move speed, mm. it was absolutely incredible. And sometimes you think to yourself, oh, I need a horse for this. No, no, no. With the duelist build that I had at the time, I was I, I felt like I was running almost as fast as some of the slowest horses, but obviously that's probably not the case, but I felt like I was really moving very fast. So yeah, anyway, if you want to check that out, then by all means, it's a playlist on my channel. Anyway, let's have a look here. 2% combat movement speed. Do I need that? I don't think I really need that. I think maybe 25% chance of knocking the enemy down with a heavy hit is probably going to be a little bit more useful because combat movement speed is not something that I'm actually going to utilize at all. And I'm actually thinking what we're going to do um, is we're going to... I, I want to go to Sisterton, obviously. A very, very amusing jokes being done in the... Uh, <laughs> in the comments as well about that. You know, Jamie going in and out of Sisterton. <laughs> that is very amusing. Anyway, uh, wait a minute. What's going on here? The Robber Knights. The Robber Knights are actually a rebel faction? Oh, hello. Okay, I actually had no idea that that was the case. Wait a minute. Can I actually fight these guys? Uh, no, they seem to be running away. And they do have a hideout here as well. That's actually a really cool feature. That seems to be a new a new, a new, feature in 4.0 of the mod, because I don't think I've seen that in previous iterations, but I could obviously be wrong, you know. I, I, there's so, so many things here. Ah, manual laborers, thank you very much, sir. How many do you need? You need 14. Okay, that's absolutely perfect. Mind your business, Headman. I just want to get my money very, very fast. Thank you. There we are. That's, that is absolutely perfect. I could technically get more, 
Um, as you can see, we got 4,600 for that, which technically would have been much, much more if I had been able to complete the caravan mission. But of course, I wasn't able to for various reasons. We will not speak of them. Yes. Anyway, let's go over to Haraway here because maybe there's going to be a task or something like that where we can actually then make our way over to Sisterton. Maybe. Oh, there's another escort merchant caravan mission. Do we even want to do that? Not sure. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't know. What do you think? I'm thinking maybe yes, because we're going to be gaining a significant amount of mercenary contract money. Um, so why not? Okay, let's try it out and see whether maybe we can actually survive this time. Well, maybe we can help the caravan survive a little bit more. As you can see, they literally start with only 11 troops. Yes, only 11 troops. So I'm not entirely sure because if here's the thing, if I actually start a battle and they lose, I don't know, let's say that they lose um, a third of their army or something like that almost immediately, then they're going to have like what, seven, eight units remaining. And then they lose another, you know, another four or something. And then they're down to three, which is exactly what happened Best beforehand. I could actually sell. engage the bandits before they even enter the battle. Aha. Uh -huh. This might actually make more sense. Okay, so this is actually a good way to counter that problem because then you're no longer going to have to deal with any of those issues where the caravan troops just decide to charge in. Anyway, this guy apparently has amazing infantry perks. So I'm actually thinking of using him instead of Garen. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Uh, Garen can go on to the archers, I guess, and Varys, I have no idea what to put him on, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I think I'm just going to leave him the way he is. I mean, I, I could put him on the cavalry, but he doesn't have a, uh, a horse, does he? I don't, think, I don't think he has a horse or anything like that. Oh, well, uh, it doesn't really matter either way, because I think we should be perfectly fine. But now we can actually utilize some strategy here. I'm going to actually tell my archers to go into loose formation, because obviously we want to, you know, we want to have them spread out a pretty significant amount here because if they can spread out it's going to make everything much much easier for their firing arcs and everything and the enemy is basically just going to charge in straight off and hopefully my archers will be able to pick off a couple of them i will try to be a distraction as is always the case there we go that actually worked out a little bit not amazingly but decent and maybe just maybe i'll be able to do a little bit more here just just you know get some people eliminated oh yeah that actually reminds me i do need to go over into a marketplace and actually purchase a relatively good one-handed sword and i'm thinking something uh, as i say with a, you know more than 100 length and maybe something with around 90 speed that's usually what i like to go for something that is a little bit slower than what you'd like normally because of course what we're trying to do here is we're trying to utilize a one-handed on horseback and usually the slower the weapon the easier the timing at least for me that is my own personal preference on that because whenever there's an extremely fast weapon I don't know whether you've noticed this yourself maybe maybe you have maybe you haven't I don't know but whenever there's an extremely fast weapon and you've got that equipped or maybe you've seen me with the fast weapon in my in my series and I'm swinging it it's always extremely difficult to time it right because you're riding pretty fast and when you release your attack, when you when you swing, you kind of need a little bit of a wind up because there's travel time from the opponent, travel time from yourself as well. And it can really make a big difference to have just a little bit of a buffer in that regard because if it instantly comes out, if the attack is instant, then you basically minimize the window of opportunity when it comes to your attack. So you see what I mean? Like if it's too fast, then you're you're basically giving yourself a very small amount of time to actually make it work. Whereas if it's a you know slower, slower weapon, then you're probably gonna have a slightly easier time. Anyway, we're gonna level these guys up into Valyrian captains now because we had a bit of a discussion or um, well, a little bit of an, an exchange in the comments and uh, someone said that the pikemen are absolutely awful or technically pikes are awful. Uh, unless you're using like RBM or whatever. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, well, that means I should probably use the other ones then. Um, but they also come equipped with uh, these lances, obviously. And they're not that good in comparison. I mean, you can see here, the weapon length is the main thing that we've got to think of here. Because if the pikemen actually use these appropriately, they're going to be super damaging. 
especially to cavalry. But if they don't, then it's better to have something that's a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to handle for the AI. And that's exactly the reason why we're probably going to be leveling these guys up into captains instead of pikemen. And hopefully that is actually going to work out pretty nicely for us. Anyway, I should probably take a look at my weapons that I currently have in my inventory. Because I'm actually thinking to myself, mm, maybe I already have a weapon that is going to do the business for me. And then I don't need to actually go and buy it. I mean, you can see here that we do have a two-handed axe, which is amazing. As I've said to you before, I have used this uh, in a previous series. I, I, did I use this in the... I might have used this in the Berserker series. I'm actually not entirely sure, but whatever the case... It's an amazing weapon. It's really, really good. It's basically perfect for what you would want it to do. It's a hard hitting, extremely long axe. It will destroy shields in a couple of hits or maybe more. Well, maybe, maybe easier if you have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of two handed weapon proficiency and so on and so forth. But anyway, let's take a look here. This thing is 103 length, which is actually decent, but the swing, sp oh, the swing speed's okay. Yeah, the swing speed's okay. Okay, so let me see here. Uh, yeah, I guess this, but this is a this is a terrible weapon. No offense, but this is a really really bad weapon. So I'm actually thinking that I'm just going to keep what I have right now, and maybe we'll stop off at River Run in a moment. Okay, why why is everyone wanting to attack us right now? Everyone is absolutely wanting to attack this caravan because it just has such a small amount of troops inside it. I assume. It's actually kind of weird. Usually caravans will have, I don't know, 15, 16 troops, but this one has 11, uh, these these ones that we've um, so far seen. Okay, so let's just go into the marketplace real quick. They're actually heading on to Fair Market as well. Mm -hmm. All right, not sure how well that's going to go. Okay, so we've got a bunch of Valyrian steel swords as well here, by the way. So if you want to buy some of those, well, there they are, you can, but they are 84,000, so good luck if you want to go for that. Mm. Let me see here. Can I actually... Ooh, this is a... This is actually a perfect sword for me. This is a perfect sword. Wonderful, wonderful sword. Look at it. 115 length. It's got uh, 86 swing speed, which is basically around the the, uh, sw the swing speed that you'd want. Ooh, a star falchion sounds good as well. And it's much cheaper and it does more damage. All right, yeah, I'm thinking we'll probably go for the star falchion. Why not? Okay, that seems that seems pretty cool. And it is, as I say, kind of cheap. So let's do, do that. How does it look? Oh, it's one of these. Oh, yeah, I love these, actually. I think that these are super, super fun. I've used the two-handed variant of this, and it is amazing. It is very, very good. So I'm happy with that. Let's just sell all of our armor here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll sell all my armor, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outfit my other companions soon enough. Once I have completed this caravan mission, we'll go and see if we can maybe buy them some um, some better gear. Because I'm pretty sure I don't have particularly good gear right now because I'm literally just fighting bandits. So <laughs> they're not really going to have anything too amazing. Okay, so unfortunately the caravan is now embroiled in this battle. So we are now going to have some pretty big issues. Possibly. Um, yeah, so now here's the problem. They are literally just... Look at them. Look at them. Look at what they're doing right now. We're going to have to tell everyone to charge in here, unfortunately. They're literally just running straight at them. This is this is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. But I, I guess the best thing for me to do is just literally try and get as much weapon proficiency as possible. Because even if we do uh, have them get killed, at least I've gotten some one-handed skill. And that's all I can really take away from that, you know. Okay, here we go. Good damage. Wow, look at the, look at the, look at the damage. This is such a cheap weapon. But it does so much damage. It's a one-handed as well. That's actually crazy. Yeah, I would have expected it to be like a, you know, one-handed slash two-handed or something like that. Because it is quite large. But um, as I say, I have very much enjoyed using the two-handed variant of this. And I've actually smithed my own two-handed star falchion in the past. Or a star, you know, star weapon. Basically, the star is the little jagged part on the edge. That's what that means. You know, that little that little attachment that goes on the end of the blade there. I say attachment, it's not an, it's not an attachment because it doesn't come off, but you know what I mean. The little uh, the little feature there. That really makes a huge difference to its overall stats, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I don't really know what it does realistically, but you know, in the in terms of the game, it is actually gonna make your weapon much, much better, as I have found in the past. Anyway, there we go. We'll take all that loot. 
how many of my people actually died? It seems like two or no, no, no. They actually only had their people get knocked unconscious. So that is actually perfect. I wonder what kind of quest is in here. Don't know whether I can spare the time to take a detour, even though it's literally only five seconds. That can, sp that can actually take a long time. That can spiral very quickly out of control. And then all of a sudden you think to yourself, oh, where's my caravan? Oh, it's being attacked. Oh no, it's dead. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that's happened to me in the past as well. So I'd kind of like to try and avoid that if at all possible. There is actually a tournament going on here as well. Thinking maybe we'll, should we, should we go for it? Should I go for it? Who's this guy? Okay, uh, he's got a massive amount of trade skill. It seems like there's a huge amount of companions that are really good at trade in this mod as well. Wind's Fury. Ooh, hello. Okay, wait a minute. This might actually be a pretty good sword for us. Yeah, this is actually not even entirely bad. This is definitely not something that I'm going to be using because I personally like the one that I have right now, but this is definitely going to be something that one of my companions could use quite nicely. Okay, I'm just going to shoot one of these guys, just do a little bit of damage, then we're, get then we're going to get shot in the face, apparently. You better not. You better not kill me now, sir. Not a big fan of you. Thank you. There we are. Let us murder. Oh, oh, well, pff, that guy got murdered. I actually wonder whether I was the intended target for this person right here. That would have been uh, <laughs> that would have been pretty funny, actually, just coming off from uh, from off screen there, just coming in, boom, uh, you know, just like not swinging, but you know, thrusting, I guess. And uh, that would have been rather rude. But thankfully, we seem to be okay. If we can just avoid taking any more damage then we should be all right. So many people with cavalry, I mean, you know, horses and things, really making a huge difference. There we go. Okay, that guy's gone as well. Okay, Brynden, Brynden Blackwood. I remember a Brynden from uh, my a Clash of Kings series. Brynden Storm, I believe his name was at the time. I think I made him into my medic as well. Anyway, there you go. We can now advance. Okay, so I don't have any ranged weapons or anything. I guess we're going to have to just... Oh, this is um, this is this fellow. Hello there. Arya's trainer, right? Isn't that him? I think. Uh, yeah, someone said that in the comments. And I was like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, and indeed, indeed. Anyway, let's see if we can eliminate Garen here as well. Obviously, he is an absolute Dothraki master, even though that's not his culture at all. <laughs> And speaking of the Dothraki, I'm actually thinking that, you know what? Once we have joined Daenerys, and once we have kind of ingratiated ourselves with her a little bit more, we're going to start using some other units that she has herself utilized in the show. Um, and I think that seems like a pretty, that seems like a pretty fun idea. Because then at least we're kind of following in her footsteps a little bit. Um, you know, so it seems kind of cool, right? Seems like it seems like a nice, uh, you know, thematically kind of cool. So, yeah, maybe something like that. Because I was originally just going to be using uh, Targaryen units, but maybe it would make sense because obviously Daenerys herself she uses a whole bunch of different people. So, probably could be quite uh, quite thematically fun. So, why not? Why not? Seems like a good idea. Garen actually made it to the final round. I'm actually really surprised. Here we go. We're able to achieve victory here, 900 gold, and uh, we did get the weapon as well. And even if no one uses the weapon, it's actually not even a big deal because we can just sell it or we can smith it or something like that, and then we'll be in a really good position anyway. Okay, so let's just go over here to our inventory. I kind of want to do this. There we go. Everyone has equipped some things. I actually replaced... <laughs> okay, so apparently my Star Falchion, according to the mod that I'm using, is... Not as good as Wind's Fury, but I'm personally happy with what I'm using. So I'm just going to do this instead. And there we go. Garen is now going to do this. He's, he's going to use that. There we go. Okay, that seems like a pretty decent idea. And then we're going to continue onward. All right, so we can only hope that we're actually going to be heading over to a nearby town. And then we're hopefully going to be done. But that means I kind of want to go over this way. Oh, I really want to go over there because we have a bunch of prisoners right now. We've got 23. Okay, I'm going to literally go over there. I'm going to I'm gonna take a, a chance here. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, hello there. This is a pretty big chance because obviously I have no idea where my caravan is going. I'm going to have to be super, super quick to catch up to them. 
Mind your own business, Headman. Yes, mind your own business. Oh. And we will just do this. Thank you. And we will get a massive amount of cash. That's kind of what we're hoping for right there. Look at that. 5,500. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so ah, it seems like we can actually still see our caravan on the map. Okay, well, I might not be able to catch up. I can only hope that now that I don't have the prisoners, I should be able to catch up relatively easily. I can just cross my fingers and hope. I don't think they're going to die super fast. Oh, no. Ooh, that was close. Okay. Whew. Really did not want them to be in there for that much longer. Okay, so I'm actually wondering now, do I need another focus point in one-handed to be able to get it to 100? I don't think so, right? I think I should very easily be able to get to 100 without another point in it. So I'm thinking now, let's go for smithing. Let's go for medicine. I don't know, something like that. Someone actually mentioned that the uh, preventive medicine thing is actually really, really useful because of the 30% recovery of lost hit points after each battle. And indeed, yeah, I would definitely, um, I would definitely maybe think about that. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? Let's just do it right now. And let's have a look here. Plus 10% range damage while mounted or plus 5% melee damage. Um, I'm, using, I'm using my melee weapons much more at the moment, so I'm just going to do that. And... I thought I had an attribute point. <laughs> I thought I had an attribute point, but apparently I don't. Okay, well, that's actually kind of sad. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, let's head on in here. Hopefully we can, you know, once again, assist our forces or assist the, the caravan's forces because this is, uh, you know them. They're just going to run in randomly and I'm actually just going to tell my forces just to charge in. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not a good idea. It really isn't, but this is kind of what they forced me into because I can't really can't really do much else because otherwise my forces are literally not going to be active enough and they're not going to absorb some of the damage that the caravan is taking and as a result they're just going to be left by themselves against 40 opponents and it's going to result in them potentially being eliminated and that's exactly the reason why we've got to be a bit careful about that Oh, that was easy enough, wasn't it? Yes, we just had to track him down over the whole battlefield, basically. But there you go. We were able to achieve victory. 15 prisoners. What? Okay, that's actually... Well, 14 prisoners. That's extremely rare, actually, in a battle of that size to gain so many prisoners. I mean, that's super, super good, actually. Anyway, uh, did I actually level up? Yeah, no, no, no. We didn't level up, but we did gain some perks. Okay, let's have a look here. Reduce movement speed or... Uh, 5% damage with one-handed weapons. Yeah, I think I'll probably go for that because that's what I'm currently doing. And uh, the more kills that I can get, the better, you know. Because if we get kills, then I'm just going to gain even more cash. And look at that. That was it. That That's us done. Okay, that was actually perfect. Very nice. And I am now still able and very much closer to go over to Sisterton, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So let me see, can I actually get over to Sisterton from here? Yeah, it seems like I can. Okay, that's good. There is also a quest over here. Oh, okay, apparently there isn't a quest anymore. <laughs> that was funny, all right. I literally went straight on in, and then the quest just disappeared. Yeah, okay, I, I assume that that is just bad, bad luck, bad coincidence or whatever, but you know, you can't help but think, oh, they just saw me coming and then we're like, hey, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm removing my quest from the, the board and yeah, oh, well, never mind, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, now, hilariously enough, there's, there's the caravan that I was actually helping and they have 43 units now. Yeah, what a classic. Yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't just have 43 beforehand, could they? No, 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 they had to have, you know, such a small, small amount of them. Okay, uh, no, we just got this guy here. All right, we just got this guy. We've actually used him in the past. He's actually not entirely bad. He's pretty good for a roguery skill. But that's pretty much it, unfortunately. 
Um, that also means that I'm going to have to go into the tavern here and actually ask the tavern keeper where Jamie has gone. Uh, if he's even going to tell me. Wait a minute, where's the tavern keeper? This guy, this guy's the tavern keeper. Kind of looks a bit weird. Anyway, good engineer. No, no one? Really? Okay, what about this? Kinvara? Okay, wait a minute. We know. Okay. This is actually perfect. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, we got this guy as well. Okay, uh, and, okay, fine, fine. So we need to go to the uh, the Irie, right? The Irie, I think, uh, if that's how you say it. Anyway, let's go over there. Oh, no. it's it, We're literally on a, a on a quest right now for a medic. It's actually super funny. Okay, so wait a second, one, one, one moment. Okay, we need to get to 25 medic skill. So even if we do find a medic, I'm going to have to just leave myself as the medic for the moment until we get to 25 and then I'll be able to get that perk and then I can you know just uh, relax with it and then we can actually make the uh, the person that actually is our medic become the become the one oh okay so Jamie's actually at Planktown right now where's Planktown where is that that is very far away as far as I can tell because I don't see it Ah, here's Kinvara. I'm going to assume that she is absolutely expensive. Okay, she's got 80 medicine, so yeah, I guess that's pretty good. I'm going to assume that she's You're really happy. expensive, potentially. Yep. As you can see. <laughs> yeah, someone actually mentioned it's probably a good idea to, you know, maybe modify the prices of some of the companions because they are going to be, you know, they're, they're very strong right now. Obviously, as you can tell from, you know, Lord Varys and uh, the other fellow that we got they're both really, really powerful, and we had them join for about 500 to 1,000 or something like that. And I'm going to assume that the modding team will be working on that. For me personally, I don't really mind about that at all because it kind of makes it, I don't know, it just makes it a little bit more viable early game. But of course, that's, that's exactly the point. You know, you're not going to have these companions early game. And if you need that kind of skill, so for example, let's say that you need medicine skill or you need engineering or a steward skill or whatever then it's literally just going to take way too long and you're just going to think to yourself okay i'm just going to get some random companion and just train them up in it and then you may not even end up using these heroes um whereas kinvara obviously she's she's pretty good i mean she only she only i say only has 80 medicine but it would be very cool if we could get her into the party but as you can quite clearly tell she has well what 38,000 cost. Yeah, a 38,000 cost is absolutely incredible. Anyway, there is a camel available here, and I don't I don't think it really sells for that much, unfortunately, but ah, oh, we actually do get to use one-handed weapons in this particular tournament. So I'm actually very pleased about this. Oh, this sword's actually real nice for um, for infantry-based combat. I like that. This is, isn't this the Marshal of the Vale? I think I think Lisa Aaron was the the um, the uh, leader of a, an extremely strong army in my previous series of Realm of Thrones, and uh, they actually um, did some pretty amazing invasions of the Free Folk. Very impressive. Okay, these these guys are definitely proving to be quite quite difficult for me to deal with right now, especially considering I'm running around with a very small amount of HP but I think we should be perfectly fine. I think there is still that rule as well where if you eliminate two enemies or something like that, then you're able to get through automatically because of the amount of points that you earned, but I'm not really wanting to give that a shot just in case I am actually going to leave randomly and, you know, not get the uh, not get the credit for it. So I'm kind of a little bit dubious about doing that because obviously that, that does work in Warband and things, but... In this, I think it does. I think I have tested it one one time before, but I I don't know. It was a while ago that I did that, so I'm not sure. Anyway, let me see if I can just go for some nice little head head thrusts here, and maybe we can eliminate him. There we go. Nice. All right, easy enough, and we can just bet once again. And oh, it's the uh, it's the named guy. It's the named guy. All right, let's do this. He's got some amazing armor on. Very shiny. I mean, hopefully it's more than that, you know, because I mean, you can technically make armor out of tin foil, and that's shiny, but it's definitely not going to be as as powerful to protect you, unless you wear it on your head, of course. If you wear it on your head, then you're absolutely fine. Anyway, let's see see what we can do here. Uh, funny, funny, not so funny jokes, notwithstanding. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, this guy. You know what? I'm actually, I actually feel like backpedaling is probably a better idea almost all the time when dealing with AI that is actually really, really good at defending. And as you can see there, he actually lowered his guard because we were, we were like backpedaling, kind of giving him the advantage, giving him the, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know, the initiative in terms of the rhythm of our, of our duel there. And that probably made a difference, or at least I think maybe it made a difference. Anyway, this thing sells for 2,800, as you can see. Maybe it's actually going to sell for more at a different location, potentially. So I'm just going to keep it with me for now, and then we'll see what we can do with it a little bit later. I'm actually going to head over to Hollows Creek right now, because you never know, maybe there's actually going to be a manual laborer task there. It is in Iron Ore Village. No. Okay, there isn't anything going on there. That's really, really sad. Okay, well, uh, we know that Jamie is actually at uh, Plank... T isn't Plank Town all the way down here? Yes, there it is, Planky Town. Why did... Okay, question. How did he get all the way down here? He was at Sisterton. I guess I just took way too long to get to wherever he was, right? That was probably the reasoning for it. Okay, we've got some two-handed stuff here. I'm going to go for strong grip. That gives me additional handling. Handling is relatively good for, you know, attack speed and, you know, just generally being able to wield things just that much easier. And so in those tournament rounds when we're, you know, having a rather large sword in our hands, we're going to be a little bit easier to uh, win with that. Did you just see what happened? That companion that we saw in Sisterton is, n is dead. He died. What? How did he die? That's the question. I have no idea. Whoa. Okay, that's a that's a pretty significant loss right there because that companion is actually really uh, pretty strong. You know, pretty strong for for him. You know, he has um, some good you know good combat skills, good you know medium level combat skills, and this guy needs manual laborers as I thought. Yeah, this is a salt village. How many do you need? You need fourteen. I have fourteen, I believe, which is actually oh. perfect. So here we go. Yep, I have exactly 14 from that Merchant Caravan quest. And look at that, another 4,100. And you just think about this for a second. This is exactly the reason why I say, hey, the Escort Merchant Caravan mission by itself is amazing. But then on top of that, you can do all kinds of other things with the resources that you get from it. It's actually kind of crazy. Anyway, there's a hideout here as well. Uh, Kingswood Outlaws. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Tumbleton's actually under siege right now as well. I have a I have a bad feeling I'm never going to be able to make it down here in time, to be honest. Uh, I should probably just, I don't know, I should probably just stop at some nearby uh, nearby town or something like that. Maybe Storm's End? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're literally just going to stop at Storm's End real fast, and then we're going to just take a quick look. We're going to ask the tavern keeper, and maybe we can get uh, Jamie to join us for a uh, cheaper price than uh, Kinvara, because obviously she's extremely expensive way too much for us right now um so yeah hello there mr tavern keeper uh maester crescent right so gallon the gallant okay okay that's funny uh engineer dragonstone even for hall okay wait a minute the maester guy actually sounds like a medic hmm might be kind of cool so where did he go even for hall right so if we where is that? Oh no. Uh, I have a bad feeling that I know where that is and I think it's up here somewhere. You know what? I'm just gonna just gonna have a look. Even Fall Hall, here we go. Oh no, it's actually this Oh no, it's actually really close by. Oh fantastic. Okay, great. Now if only we could get over there without having to um <laughs> go around the houses, so to speak. Very much hope that we're going to be able to get there in time because these guys literally move on at the drop of a hat for some reason. But, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what's going on here? John Connington has been taken prisoner by Desert Bandit. Are you serious? He literally was taken prisoner by Desert... Okay, by Desert Bandits. That's, that's super strange. Anyway, yeah, th this guy has 120 in medicine. As you can see, however, he has nothing else. Um, but he's going to be super, super cheap for us. So I'm going to probably get him. And there we have it. Because I'm sure that Jamie is probably going to be relatively good at pretty much everything. And we don't really need him to be good at medic skill or anything like that. I also do want to get 225 medic skill myself before we actually assign the maester to his duties. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.